Hey there, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Sarah May Ives, and today we're gonna to talk about the single most important thing that you can do to sell your services, to write copy that sells, and to make sure that your landing pages convert. Because let's face it, when you're starting your business, there are so many conflicting pieces of information that you may not even know what to do. And today I'm gonna to talk about one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they are starting their business. And what we're gonna talk about is something that you may have even heard so much that you become immune to it. But I work with a lot of people, I do their advertising. And when we're doing advertising, it really forces us to ask some crucial questions about your business and your offerings and who you serve. So one of the most important things that you can do to improve your copywriting, to sell your services, and make sure that your landing pages convert is to be extremely clear on who you help. So defining your niche is something that's really kind of thrown around um, in a lot of coaching circles. And you may even think, oh gosh, Sarah, I've, I've heard that so many times before. I already know that I have to zone in on a niche, but it's either overwhelming, you don't know what to do, you don't really know how to pick a niche when you're just starting out, when you're not even sure what, which one of your skills might be the most profitable or, or what might be the most helpful to people. Here's what happens when you don't know your niche. So when you don't know your niche and then you go straight into advertising, putting together some packages and landing pages, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get a lot of people that maybe are interested in you and what you have to say, but you're gonna ultimately not be able to close the deal or to make sales because you're not being descriptive enough with their problems and what they're going through. So when it comes to picking your niche, it's so much more than just say picking your niche. You know, oh, I work with stay-at-home moms who want to start a business. Well, you really actually have to know the nitty-gritty detail of their day-to-day -day life. The reason why you need to know these details is because these details are is going to what make uh, these details are going to make your copywriting sell. There's a saying in the business industry that your level of profit is directly proportional to how well you know your clients. So you need to know in great detail what they're suffering with right now, even to the point of saying like, I know what they feel like when they wake up in the morning. I know what they feel like at nighttime when they can't get to sleep because they're so busy worrying about how they're gonna pay the bills how they're gonna figure out you know, X, Y, Z. So whatever those problems are, you need to have such an inherent um, understanding um, of what they're going through. So this is so crucial because when it comes to actually engaging them, maybe it'll be okay if you're not laser focused, maybe you will get some engagement, but when it comes to actually making sales, you're not going to succeed. Now, so today we're talking about, if you're just joining us now, today we're talking about the single most important thing that you can do to improve your copywriting and to improve your sales. And that thing is knowing your customers inside and out, knowing the struggles that they're going through. And then in addition to that, in your copywriting, communicating how not only do you understand them like crazy, but you've been there once, or if you haven't been there once, you should be able to demonstrate why you're even an authority to talk about it at all in the first place. Because ultimately that is what's going to create trust with people. So when you know these details about them, suddenly your copywriting will transform. Suddenly your copywriting is going to offer them not only a full understanding of what they're going through, but it's going to be able to demonstrate that you know the exact solution that they need. One thing that I've heard from, from clients that I work with, so when we're testing out offers, this is definitely something that we come up against is the clarity of their offer. And you have to figure out in terms of knowing your pain. So people will say to me, listen, I've been to a Tony Robbins event. I've been to say um, a Grant Cardone, you know, conference, and the people in the room were extremely different. You know, they came from all walks of life, they came from all, uh, all types of experience, but somehow they're able to make millions serving a massive amount of people. 
So I think it's sort of a seductive thing that to think when you're first starting out, but it's not true at all. It's very easy to think, well, hey, if these heavyweights in the industry had success without niching down to a particular type of person, why can't I do that? I mean, ultimately the answer is because they're at a much different stage of their business than you are at. When you're just starting your business, you're trying to gain momentum, you're trying to gain traction, you're trying to figure out you know, which one of your skills is really the most valuable to people, which one of your you know, client's problems are you most able to help them with, you're at a much different position than Tony Robbins who's been, I don't know, maybe he's been doing this for 30 years now. And I heard something very interesting too within the last month is that 10 years ago, even Tony Robbins, even him, he was having problems scaling because he was too, he was too general. And he had a business consultant who I wish I could remember of the name right now, but he met with a business consultant who told him this and said, listen, you need to focus on business owners. And he did that. And now he's blown up even a million times more to be the success that he is today. So when you're first starting out your business, you cannot compare yourself to those heavyweights in the, in the industry and think that that's a realistic benchmark to go for. You might be there someday. In fact, I dearly hope you are. But if you want to get there, you've got to start out smaller, more specific, and you've got to test out exactly which one of your skills is the most helpful to your potential clients. And there are a few ways to do this. So when you are first starting out, in, in terms of picking out a niche, it doesn't mean that you have to pick just one niche. You can actually sit down and put together three niches of people that you think are the highest potential to help. And what you wanna do is write out each of these avatars in great detail. So maybe one of your niches, say you're a romance coach, maybe one of your niches is say alpha women. Um, that's somebody that I've worked with in the past, someone that was catering to a very specific type of woman. Maybe another one of your avatars would be people that have already been married, had kids, they're grown up, they're older. Um, and then maybe another one uh, are people that are in their 20s and they're just doing online dating and they don't know what to do. So there's different ways that you can package your ideal avatar and you don't have to pick just one. And I'm gonna tell you right now how you can actually test this out without sinking an immense amount of money. So what we're talking about today is the single most important thing that you can do to have more compelling copywriting and to sell your services more. So once you have that, the niches that you think are most likely to convert, what you can start doing is posting on your page every single day, posting content that might you know, apply to these people you're also gonna get on video, get on video. If you wanna scale fast, get on a Facebook Live every single day for 30 to 60 days. Talk about this different content, relate it to this, this three different specific niches. Maybe you're gonna rotate it every three days. You're gonna do one topic for, for niche A on one day, another topic for niche B on the second day, and then you're gonna continue the cycle and you're going to see, you're gonna look into your page and you're gonna see which posts are getting the most engagement, which posts are people caring or talking about. So I hope that you're finding this content helpful today. We're mainly talking about how it's so, so important that when you're starting out, say you're a life coach, you need to be specific in who you're helping and why you're helping them. You need to be specific in the struggles that they are going through. And even if you don't know your ideal avatar right away, you can put together three prototypes of those avatars and start doing content for all three of them and test it out. You can even start promoting those posts. Now, I'm not talking about major ad spend, but you can put $10 behind each post. You're only looking at roughly $300 a month. That's virtually nothing for Facebook ad spend. And you can start to see like, what are people engaging with? What are they enjoying? And this will dramatically improve your copywriting, will dramatically improve your confidence in what you're talking about and who you help. And it will get you so much further so that when it does come time to really scale, to really take your offerings to a cold market, you're really gonna have clarity on what to offer. I'm Sarah May Ives. I hope that you have enjoyed this training today. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and tell me where are you watching from? What stage in your business are you in right now? Thank you so, so much for joining me. 